Well, if you couldn't tell from the intro, this week we're doing an, another open segmented piece. I'm doing a lamp for my front room, so please come along with me this week. I hope you enjoy the show. I'm starting here with the base. I'm ripping it into one inch strips. If you're gonna use a thin rip jig, remember to put it before your blade so you don't cause any pinching and get some bad kickback. Maybe I should do my glue ups like Ryan does over at West Coast Boards. <laughs> He's got some cool videos and some really neat, his glue up station is just the best. So if you wanna see quality glue ups with huge glue ups, Ryan at West Coast Boards, I'll throw a link to his channel down below. It's a really fun watch and he does great work. Patterned um, cutting boards is kind of his thing. So really cool, great videos. He usually puts a lot of effort into them. So, Check him out if you get a chance. Fun stuff to watch. So after some quick math and some test cuts, I'm gonna need 288 more of these. Maybe 287. Um, and with that's 1.1 inches, which means I'll need about 320 total inches of wood. I don't know if I have enough. I'm gonna get this ripped down into one inch strips, see what I've got. I might have to go to the store and grab another piece of wall. The walnut's all broken down into one inch strips. The next thing to do is to continue breaking it down further into the individual segmented pieces. As I said earlier, they're gonna be have a 1.1 outside length and the degree set on my sled is set to eight. And that will be what I need to get 18 open segments per ring. So after further calculations, I'm not going to need 15 rings, I'm going to need 17 rings, which means I probably will have to go to the store to get more walnut. I'm going to continue cutting out these wedgies. I need a total of 306 to complete this project. We are currently at 4 times 18, which would be 72. So let's keep rolling. There are all the pieces. Don't know if you can see it. Put a nine inch circle on there. Put 
flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. And I gotta decide how I want to get a mortise turned into this. Because I don't think this big thing will work with the sacrificial tenon when it goes to taking off at the end. I think it'll be too fragile. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn a a mortise into this. All right, now with the base done, I can start the long glue up. And this one's gonna take time because I gotta do each row, let it dry, do a row, let it dry. Um, so let's get started. You might be wondering why I'm replacing the lamp in my front room. And as you can see, as I pan around here, peeking on the side of this lamp, my grandson gave us a gift, art. It will last forever. <sighs> but do I really want it on the side of my lamp? Ever since I saw opened segmented turning for the first time, I always wanted to build a lamp. This just gave me that motivation to go ahead and do it now. Bring one down, 16 more to go. Shoot, first try. All right, let's load up the next round. Noticed I sounded kind of surprised when that popped off. On the last video I did, when I took off the rings, almost every time the segments came with and it was a disaster. I'll throw a link to that open segmented vase in the description below. So while I'm waiting for the glue to dry, I went ahead and made up another accessory for my French cleat wall. As you can see right here, I've added a storage for my two inch sanding pads. And you're looking at that up there and you're going, John, that's like seven feet off the ground. How are you gonna make that useful? I'm like, ah, oh, I got you, watch this. So at, when I'm not using it, it's up here, but when I need to sand, it doubles as a rack that can just sit on any workbench, see what I need. At the bottom, those are actually sanding pads, and I got my, norm, my main two inch discs right there ready to go. Tell me what you think about this in the comments. I'm wondering how you guys store your two inch sanding discs. Well, a little more than halfway through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine out of 17. So we're getting there. We'll get this one next layer glued up. 
And then we're gonna start working on the neck, which is where the light fixture, the socket, not the light fixture. I guess it's a light fixture. The socket will mount to on the lamp. That's gonna be a piece of walnut that is cylindrical in shape to match the style of this. And it'll be about two inches, two and a half inches in diameter, tapering to from two to about one. And it'll be about four inches tall. Get that turned into a cylinder. And then as I get closer to finishing that, I'll cut it to final length and bore out the center and such. See you over at the lathe. There you go. Once the final height is determined on the other big piece, I'll get this turned down to final dimensions because I know I want it around two inches in diameter down to one, but I also want it to look right on the piece. So I'm gonna leave this oversized. Well, this is the last set of segments that I'm putting in. Get this in. And then we'll get the top on. I was hoping to get turning today. I don't think it's gonna happen. The weather's cool for Florida anyways. It's in the 40s, the glue takes a little bit longer to set. So I think I'm gonna let this set overnight and get at it tomorrow. hit record so I've got almost missed putting the cap on for you guys I mean you've been sticking around this long I want you to see the whole thing right and this is type on quick and thick the last layer is going on this will sit overnight to set so all this glue is good and cured. Then I can go watch 
my Detroit Football Lions play in a divisional round. Having won last week for the first time in just about my adult life. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I have a reference line underneath that I'm putting on to make sure that this top is pretty close to centered. Perfect. All right. There we go. Put on some weight. Let this sit. Get this thing turned and on the lathe. Woo! <laughs> give you the flyby. Boom, all that beautiful walnut there. That is gonna look so awesome. You can see the light peeking through. Mm. That looks awesome. I hope you're as excited as I am about this. So I have to drill a hole for the cord to pass through. And then about right here, I realized I screwed up my order of operations. This is the first time I've seen the uh, piece getting mounted on the lathe. It's so big. Okay. So now I'm going to spin this up for the first time. Low RPM, because of my order of operation screw up that you've already seen, I got to put a one inch, a very shallow one inch mortise at the end out here. I don't. And over the next few minutes, you'll see me turning and switching out between my Carter and Son half inch bowl gouge, the Easy Wood Tools rougher and medium finisher with a negative rake tip on it. And I use this to make sure I can get a nice smooth cylinder for this lamp shape. And as I turn along, I slowly raise the speed and I finally get up to a max speed of about 900 RPM. That's all I really felt safe going any faster with something so big. And you can see I'm kind of rocking back and forth here and I'm using my body to move that tool along. I'm not moving my arms, I'm keeping it nice and steady 
with this large spindle type of turning, I didn't want to get a catch or force anything and cause it to go flying off the lathe. On my video now just a Hi. second all right there's melissa vintage ah. design what's your question on my whatnot how much do you think i can sell these rusty pieces for there's four of them they look like this all right what's today's date i don't know saturday saturday i'll put the date on the screen and then, then I'll, at the end of the video, I'll put up what, what we actually sold it for. I'm thinking $6 for the set. Johnny said eight. Okay, I'll put it on the screen when this goes live. All right, so I'm going to sand this up to 220 like I did the other pieces. Then I'm going to part it off and test if my uh, holes line up properly to finish assembling the lamp. But first things first, sanding.
So I wasn't thinking about the diameter of this. I was thinking about the diameter of the wire. Eh, doesn't fit. 10 millimeter hole. That is not a 10 millimeter hole. I'm going to just throw this, chuck this up on the drill bit, on the drill press with a 10 millimeter bit so this can drop in. And we'll go from there. All right, so the rest of this build is about order of operations. I've got the neck assembled. I have to get this cord, spread it up through here, up through here, and through here, and on there. And then I got to get, where's the rest of it? Oh, it's off screen. The socket and connect the wires to the socket. I am not going to show you how I do this. There are instructions on the back of this. Oh, here, I have the socket right here. Never mind. The socket fits in here like this. And there are instructions on the back of the kit on how to wire this up. I'm not an electrician. I'm not going to show you how I'm going to do it. Um, but if you want to do this, I got this kit from Lowe's. And uh, I'm going to just follow the instructions on the back. Regardless, I've got to get this wire up through here, through here, and through here. All right. I'm going to use this to get it centered up. There's, this may fall when I pull the tailstock off, so I'm going to support it with my hand. I'm going to get my glue ready first. Yeah, order of operations, man. That is what I am learning about this particular piece. It's all about order of operations. Okay. What? Yeah. Heard me cussing. As I sanded it. <laughs> All right, let's try a different way of this. Got a bunch of weights balanced on there, <laughs> precariously, but no one's in, in the shop but me, so it will be fine. I got this on a slow roll. I'm going to put a few coats of this uh, clear lacquer from Watco on there. Not sponsored, just happened to like it. See how it looks when I'm done. So off camera, I spent 15 minutes trying to feed this wire through here. And what I'm going to do is hook this string to the end, pull it through, tie it to my wire, and pull it through so I can connect up the light socket. All right, so I managed to get the wire through. A little bit of tape, a little bit of luck. 
Let's see. Okay, we are at my workbench. <laughs> Let's plug this in, fingers crossed. And, ta-da, yes, yes, yes. Oh man, this thing looks awesome. Let's see, let's turn it on with the shade. <laughs> Perfection, Perfection. Oh, I'm gonna back you up. I'm gonna talk over here like this. This has gotta be one of the best ones I've made so far. I'm so loving the way this one turned out. Please stick around, I'm gonna show you how it looks at the house, in the house when I uh, get back there from the workshop here. I appreciate you sticking around for so long. This was a long video. You stuck around this far. Please take the time to subscribe because I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm getting better at this and I hope you appreciate uh, the fun. Anyways, have a great week and we'll see you on the next one.